to you, friends and brethren around the world. The Bible describes this world in the following way. John chapter 3 verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Why this love of darkness and evil? Because there is a God of this world and we are told that in 2 Corinthians 4 verses 3 to 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are perishing, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan holds this world in blindness. We read in Matthew 4 verse 16, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. That light began to shine in a world of darkness as the work of the great God in the 20th century began at the Furbutt Schoolhouse on July the 9th, 1933, with 22 people in attendance. Then the first preaching of the true gospel of the kingdom of God began to be broadcasted to the United States. And that was on October the 9th, 1933. That's when the Philadelphia era had been given an open door and its messenger walked through it. We read in Matthew 4 verse 17. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He also said in John 12 and verse 36 on, While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spoke Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. And Jesus did depart in the 21st century and was hidden from the world of darkness. And only those who had the light became children of light. The people who were called into the Church of God during the years 1933 to 1987, and that church first named the Radio Church of God, and then as it spread worldwide, it became known as the Worldwide Church of God, were, brethren, they were the most fortunate of people on earth. These were the people of light, and no matter where they lived on earth, they were given information from an apostle on how to shine. You see, brethren, it takes a way of life. It takes a change, a way of life that is changed, which is away from the darkened world, influenced by Satan the devil. These illuminated people inculcated the fruits mentioned in Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 into their lives. And those fruits are from the Holy Spirit, which is the source of their illumination. Galatians 22 to 20, uh, 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit that the Spirit produces in a person's life is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness and goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these kinds of fruits. What did they do to cause this change in their lives? First, they became aware through the message of the gospel that they were under the influence of Satan. Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 3. And you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. And then, and then did what, they did what Jesus Christ said in Mark 1 verse 15. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Yes, they repented. Why? Because they believed the gospel. 
and through the process of symbolically dying in the baptismal watery grave, gave their lives to Christ. Galatians 5 verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their sinful self. They have given up their old selfish things and the evil things they wanted to do. So they applied verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And that Spirit is what they all believed is the unifying influence of the Church of God. Ephesians 4 verse 1. <clears throat> I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation wherewith you are called. Verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity. Yes, the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Yes, the members and ministry of the worldwide Church of God believed and lived there was one body of Jesus Christ, which He, Christ, is the head of. Not a split, shattered, disjointed church, each doing their own works, scattered by Satan around the world. You know, I said the following. The people, you and I, who were called into the Church of God during the years 1933 to 1987, that church first named the Radio Church of God, then the Worldwide Church of God, were the most fortunate of people on earth. I said, listen to this, I said they were the most fortunate people. Why? Because they understood God was producing a family and they were to be the first fruits of that family to receive eternal life as immortal God beings. Then they would assist Jesus upon his return to this earth to teach God's will to every living human being on this earth. You see, dear brethren, you were called to sit with Christ on his throne as a royal priest. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar or special people that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. It's time, my brethren, to wake up out of that sleep and rekindle the light once given to you. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah says to all of us in Isaiah 52 verses 1 to 3. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bands of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the eternal God, You have sold yourself for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. Brethren of God, there is a beautiful garment waiting for you as the bride of Jesus Christ. Open the door to Jesus Christ, the one that's locked in Laodicea by you. And hear His voice calling to you to awake, to awake. Until next time, this is Michael Benish for the 21st century work of God saying, Goodbye brethren and goodbye friends. Please visit our website.